You know what I mean? Yes. So, so what they don't want us is huge. That's why going into the subject of the show, they have lied to us about everything, including right. the nature of who we are and our so-called history. You know what I mean? And 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 the things and the the beliefs and the ideas that make up who we think we are are all based on lies. All of them. Absolutely. So the <laughs> reason we got together, it's so funny. We um I, I'm a bit concerned when I hear people saying royal bloodline. Because to me, I'm just going to say it, and, and I'm going to say this because this is what I feel. That sounds a lot like racism to me when someone says that their bloodline is a royal bloodline, that it's different, that it's special. Because, But then what I'm seeing is, and I'm going to surprise Terry with this because I already said it to Scott, is I think starseeds are racist. <laughs> and not, I'm not even just saying there's there's black star seeds that are racist because they think that they're the only ones and they're the special ones. And then there's white star seeds that's racist because they're trying to prove that they're different and they're special and and their bloodline is better. But then overall, what I'm seeing is a class system developing among star seeds where. What 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 is an identification of racism? Don't talk to these people. Don't accept them in our group. Don't communicate with them. You know, oh, we're better than them because we're a part of this group or we follow this leader. Um, and then now I'm going to cast you off and tell you you're going to hell, right? You're not going to ascend. And so now I can start picking you apart because you smoke or because you drink or because you eat bread or because you eat meat or because you, well, you know, these huge list of reasons. Oh, you got a tattoo. Oh, you got fake fingernails. Oh, like all these reasons, like people are looking for every single thing they can because they've already been trained in a system and they can't get that systematic thinking out of their mind. And in these hidden programs that tell them for me to be good, you have to be bad. For me to be right, you have to be wrong. Absolutely. And it's creating a new set of classism and I'm really kind of tired of it. And it's really weird for me to see star seeds fighting about this Egyptian Pharaoh was white. And it's like, why are you, what? I'm trying to figure this out. Are you a star seed? Are you from the stars? And you taking on the body of a human? Or are you taking on the race that your body is in? And so people are living in multiple worlds where they trying to have it all. Like I'm special because I'm a Lyran, but then I'm special because, you know, I'm the royal bloodline. And I had to ask somebody who was very popular that if you are a Anunnaki, how does that make you royal? Because we know that there's some founder races that came here. And so how does being an Anunnaki Trump founder race? How does how does this thing affect my ascension? And how do these beings affect my ascension? Because regardless of what set I'm claiming, am I still not able to ascend regardless? You know, so I threw a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> but what are the founder races? Uh, 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 well, look, 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 what I understand is the founder races are the ones that first brought us from primates to humans. Okay? They, uh, some call them the Elohim, some call them other names, but apparently, <clears throat> and from what I also hear, we're like on the 13th, 14th, and 15th version of human beings on the planet right now. Right, 22 races, right? Like, didn't that's, work. That's, that's, that's in our genetics. When we were first first created, we were by the so called founder races, Elohim or whatever have you, we were a hodgepodge of 22 different genetic races. Okay. And uh, since then, we've been messed with and toyed with by multiple civilizations and other ETs, some negative, some not so negative. 
And the ones that people focus on the most are the Anunnaki because they're the most recent. Okay, they're the most recent who have, I mean, they have literally messed with our genetics and they have made hybrids. They've made a new class of human being. The 15th version, as far as I understand it, you know what I mean? Which would be white people. Not all white people. I believe they say the Anunnaki created the Bobic white people and the other white people are created from the Maldekians, the Martians who came here later on after the Anunnaki. Now, I don't know if any of this is true. You know what I mean? All I know that what is for sure is that we have been messed with quite royally and we have all been lied to about everything. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> right now, like, <clears throat> we, we, we're, we're at a crossroads as a species, if you ask me. You know? And they don't seem to be dicing up the races anymore. They want all of us. If you're not them, they want you gone or in a, as a, as a slave, you know. Then they, they're not caring. They didn't they didn't dice up who got this shot or the juice, should I say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you you're doing good. They weren't dicing anything up with that. You know what I mean, they 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 want us all for what they they have in store. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day. We have been for quite some time just been chattel to these people. At one point in time, we've had grand civilizations on this planet. We've had civilizations that have worked with harmony, and we've had civilizations that's worked strictly against harmony, you know, and with this against this planet. So right now, we're I believe we're trying to graduate into adulthood from being human beings, but we're not doing a very good job at it, if you ask me. Because back to what you were just saying, I mean, us star seeds, and I'm doing some air quotes, should uh, be at the forefront of trying to heal people and trying to put ego aside. But it seems like ego gets stronger and stronger. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's baffling to me. Like you were saying, <clears throat> people hold on to figures and groups so tightly that they're willing to sever ties with somebody who they know personally. Like, hold up, time out. I spent time with you. We share, we, we, we're, we're like really friends. We know each other and we're life here. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to sever ties with me over something that somebody you don't even fucking know something they said? You know <laughs> what I mean? It's fucking insanity. You know? And and, 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 and this, this is where A lot of right people now. do it. This is where we're at, you know? And, and, and I, I can't help but think this is all by some sort of design. Are these, these figures, so-called figures coming out, are they some sort of controlled opposition? I don't know. I don't know where to put my finger on it, but we got to do better. We got to do better. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop treating each other like this. Like, what the fuck are we Who really are doing? you saving <laughs> when tarot card readers and Reiki healers are fighting each other? This is absolute nonsense. <laughs> I'm mean, like, seriously, what do, if, if, you, if we're supposed to be the most spiritually allotted of all of us, we are in some deep trouble here. You know what I'm saying? When, when just the littlest things can set you off. You know what I mean? Littlest things can make you say, fuck you. I ain't never talking to you again. Leave my group. Blah, blah, Over blah. what, so though? You know? Unknown unknowns. Because I'll look at some people and you can start counter doing dates with science. But guess what? I... I I guarantee that even if you know how to carbon date and do these type things, right? I still don't think that's a guarantee that the information you're going to come back with scientific methods are necessarily true. Because there's going to be far too many unknowns than knowns. And so you're arguing over unknowns, unknown unknowns. We know so little, we don't know. We so we know so little, we don't even know what we don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I don't know. I tell you what, one of the main things I've always said is I've researched so much to know that I don't know shit. The more I know, the, the more, more you know, the less you know. I mean, seriously, how the hell are you going to be so absolute on fucking anything being in the research that we all claim to be? You know? I 
So, so the fact that people would get so fixated on one fucking thing, knowing that we've <laughs> with lies our whole life, is is so not on me. You know what I mean? And I get it. I've been there to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Especially with that Corey Good figure. You know what I mean? And then I ask myself, why? Why did I allow my my logic to be superseded? Because over my feelings. And that's because it goes back to the ego thing. We have yet to put that shit aside. You know what I'm saying? When I was when I when I was ingesting all this Corey information and, and then actually met Corey myself, you know what I'm saying? And had I had dialogue with him and then and you know, one of me and Jermaine's little uh, lives one time. So we, and especially Jermaine, we thought we were all cool and shit. You know? <laughs> I was, I, I, my ego was the one defending this asshole. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about if this information is true or not, but I do know he's a dick. Part you know of I'm it, saying? a part of it is ego, but a part of it is this, we are seeking stability. And when you knock the tower card the card is broken, right? The fire is coming in. That is absolute chaos. When you take all the beliefs that you had, this is like telling somebody they got a sinkhole underneath their house. There's nothing safe, nothing secure, everything's changing. Oh, we're losing it all. Fear kicks in because when you tell me, I, I tell people this is how deep the delusion we have is. I don't know the what if you learned that instead of the color blue, that the sky was actually the color orange. What if you learned that the sky was the floor and the floor was the sky, which this is a theory on the wall there that we're actually inside out and not outside in, right? Or yeah, we're, yes, yeah, like we're really inner. <laughs> so when you remove these things that are stable, comfortable, easygoing thoughts, and this is why a lot of people are like, screw all this type of disclosure, because I don't need you taking apart my beliefs because I need security and safety and stability. And if you start rocking the boat with your new ideas, you're gonna fuck my world up and I can't handle that. And when you are used to being in a cult, because your family is a little cult, people keep saying, they don't really, your family's a cult, right? They have, the, you're raised with a certain belief. Your church is a cult. You're raised with a certain belief. And I saw this, it was so funny, this show I saw where the guy went from being a part of the Moonies and then he met Harry Krishnas in the airport and he joined the Harry Krishnas. Then he joined the multi-level marketing group because once you're addicted to being in a cult and you're used to cult mentality, all you go do is reproduce it. Even though you're leaving that one because of the flaws, you start new ones. And so here we are with people basically starting new churches. You're right. They're starting over. You're saying, I'm I'm out of the church and I'm this and I'm that and church. But you, by nature, number one, go find a leader. Number yeah. two, you go read their philosophies in their book. And then you turn it into a freaking Bible. And yeah. here you go, church one on one. And if you don't believe what the leader of the church says, we're going to kick you out the church. We're going to excommunicate you. And then, yeah. you know, just like how we got churches here. Do you not know why we have so many Christian churches? Why? Because I didn't like the, the edict. So I put the 99 edicts on the door and then I started a new church, right? And so this is all we're doing is just going from church to church to church. And I'm really to this point where I'm saying, here it is, the army of one situation that we discussed. And Terry, I really would like for you to expand on that too, is here it is, this army of one, where what if you alone are the collective? Because I got to collect my thoughts and my belief and my mind and my heart, right? And I have to build a foundation of who I'm going to be. That regardless of what Scott is doing or regardless of what Terry is doing, I know what I am doing. And I'm if I'm the only person still doing right in the world, let me do that. And I am the collective. And like you're saying with these groups, let me decide who you are as an individual and stop trying to attach myself to a group and align with the group. And then let me know individually, do you align with me instead of me trying to align with you all the time? Let me hold on to who I am, my belief, my principles that, you know, I, I really go into this with the wheat and the chaff, you know, the wheat is the meat part. The chaff is the dust that flies away. And if you don't understand and have the meat part down for yourself, 
who are you in your core values and your beliefs, you will fly away like dust and you'll be swept along every time a new idea or a new thing comes. You're going to jump into this and jump into that. And you're going to just be swept away in nonsense constantly, like raising giants out of the ground and, uh, you know, every new little crazy idea. But that's just me talking. No, you're right. Like, uh, you, you said you got, that's why me personally, I have a by myself meeting almost every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just to check myself. You know what I mean? Because, look, we're under heavy programming all the goddamn time. We are bombarded by negative frequencies. We, there, there's, there's subliminal messages fucking everywhere. There's ones that we don't even know about. I firmly believe that they have fucking voice to skull technology at McDonald's. You're driving along. And then there's a McDonald's nearby, and then all of a sudden in your head, you're like, damn, I want a Whopper. Oh, I want a Big Mac. I want a Big Mac. And then you see the McDonald's, oh, let me turn on and get a Big Mac. I firmly believe they're using fucking voice technology as advertisement. You know what I'm saying? And you're running around like Pavlov's dog. When the bell rings, you're you're starting to salivate. You can taste what a Big Mac tastes like in your mouth. Literally, they have something in these McDonald's that's literally beaming out frequencies into people's heads as they're driving by. I firmly believe that. And, and then everybody, all of a sudden in their head, they might hear, I want a Big Mac. Oh, I haven't had a Big Mac in a while. It's been a while since I had a Big Mac. And then all of a sudden on the horizon, oh, there's a McDonald's right over there. And they turn in. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I, I'm going to confirm that. I'm going to confirm that with something that was pointed out to me at the conference last year was that there were no bugs, like we were outside and there were no mosquitoes, right? Well, not that far from there is Universal Studios. And I guarantee you there's enough trash in there with all the food, donuts, blah, 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 that, that there should be plenty of bugs. And I've never seen one insect at Universal Studios because if you did have bugs there, ants on the ground or mosquitoes or flies, you would be like, Ugh, you know what I mean? You'd be uncomfortable. But whatever the signal is in that area, there's no bugs. There were no bugs. That is profound what you just said. That is profound what you just said because you you're a hundred per fucking percent right. And in Florida, you know what I'm saying? It was Honey bugs. We got the most and weird the amount, bugs. The amount of sweet and sticky shit that's everywhere in the air. You know what I'm saying? It would be a bug's paradise. Ants everywhere. They could make colonies under there, but there's none. You're absolutely right because they are sending out frequencies there on a mass scale. And you're right, where we were is close enough to universal to get that frequency of no bugs. And then I'm when you go certain places, like cotton candy shouldn't actually be that powerful. But I was noticing when you walk around, it's like a perfume. Like you just walked into a perfume cloud of certain food smells. Like yeah. in front of a building, of a McDonald's. McDonald's actually smells like, like if you put McDonald's food in your car, it smells like shit actually, right? Like when you're done with it, it's like, oh my God, this stinks. Yeah. But it smelled so good when you were driving down the street that the perfume smell woo, comes into your car when you're driving by. But then if you have that food sitting in your car, when you're done with that stuff, it smells like funk. Right. Yeah. It smells like absolute funk. You're hundred percent right. And what if that's working in connection with the fucking fungus that they fucking loaded us with? You know, it's all fucking crazy. You know, <laughs> maybe, you know <laughs> it's all crazy. Like maybe they hijacked the signal from this fungus. That's a natural signal that could keep us Eat me. With each other. Maybe company. Maybe it, it's fungus that is the power behind our co-creative consciousness. You know, wow. what I'm saying? fungus that's innate to us, kind of like these plants and animals have the same fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it's that that they've hijacked. You know what I'm saying? It's actually something palpable that they have been able to fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Not just some sort of thought or frequency, but an actual live living organism that is responsible for this, that they've been actually able to hijack and manipulate. I don't know. I just thought of that. But well, but, but, but let's, let's, think, <laughs> let's think about this for a second. If the Anunnaki came down and were manipulating humans or creating different different races or whatever, what other technology have they had? You know, and are our plants native to to the earth? <laughs> yeah, yeah. see what people are. Exactly. 
Well, what do we know that's come in from from there? How do we know the intelligence level? How do the, we know how it's programming and how it's interacting with us? What's what is everything? What are all these plants that and and vegetables and water and in the air and things that we don't see? How much of it's been programmed that we're thinking is good for us? It's just like the plants. None of the plants. Well, I shouldn't say none of the plants, but plants are have come from all different kinds of sectors in our universe. That there you go, in the universe. Yeah, and, and so maybe, and, and I think, um, you know, people have said, is some of these plants we're not meant to ingest, but we're ingesting them. So it's a slow control, you know, like, like wheat, like the legumes, they have all that, the lectins on the outside. That's hard for us, for the human bodies to digest, but that's yes. a control mechanism right yeah yeah 100 percent right they and and we we know the plant that's almost confirmed to not be from here and that's marijuana you know what i'm saying whoever brought here to this planet it has no other characteristics of most of the plants here on this planet you know what i'm saying i could go into the laundry list but just trust and believe this is a a, a, a alien planet a alien plant you know what yeah. i mean it, it truly is but it seems to have all kinds of health benefits towards us so somebody probably put it here you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> and we have yet to utilize it because if we utilized hemp we could make everything out of hemp you know what i mean we, we yeah. could we, uh, you know pressurized hemp is 10 times stronger than pressurized wood you know well and hemp, hemp <laughs> up until the 1920s i believe that's when the whole hemp industry was like shut down because yes. the cotton industry was taking up but yes. i know my mother you know like they used to have hemp they used hemp for uh would eat the hemp seeds they would grow use the hemp rope and stuff like that and then it would became totally illegal because hemp the fabric from hemp was so much stronger than cotton and the whole cotton industry was starting to take to take root so it was lobbied and it was made illegal yes I agree. But now here, here in uh, <clears throat> here in Canada, uh, they are hemp farms just down the road. They've got a hemp oil um, factory, so they're they're using a lot of hemp here yeah, in that's in fantastic. Canada. You know, well, it, it, they put the kibosh on just like they could put the kibosh on anything. Like yeah. I, I tell you, uh, we, we're talking about our history. Like most people don't know that they already had electric cars 120 years ago. And they also had cars that run on straight ethanol, which burns clean into the air. You know what I'm saying? And these ethanol cars were actually the most functioning cars out of all of them because ethanol was super, super cheap. It burned clean and it was very efficient. It burnt better than gasoline did, you know? But it was actually Rockefeller that shut all this down, you know? J.D. Rockefeller, when he finally got control over the oil in the Middle East, all the way back in the fucking 20s, he came up with prohibition, which made it illegal to make ethanol. Therefore, they couldn't power these cars anymore. And he was able to get away with this by greasing politicians. You know what I mean? And this is all written out of our history. We Nobody, yes. every person knows nothing about an ethanol car that ran on alcohol. You know what I'm saying? But this, that, 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 let, that was, went on for 15 years in this country. The electric car went on and they sabotaged the electric car. They put out bad headlines. They were dangerous and they would explode and people stopped using those. You know what I mean? So all the alternative was left with their gas powered cars. And once Rockefeller had his uh, infrastructure for gasoline in place, they lifted the uh, prohibition. Okay. And meanwhile, during prohibition, they all got rich by bootlegging alcohol. Exactly. That's how, that's how Joseph Kennedy made his fortune bootlegging and alcohol during prohibition because they were all in on this shit. You know what I'm saying? They're a bunch of criminals that they've been running us for for at least the last 200 years. And we have paper trail out of the, at least the last 120 years. You know? But nobody wants to hear any of this shit. You know what I mean? They don't want to hear it because their their job... Like, I'm going to tell a quick antidote real quick. <clears throat> the Rockefellers, because they're, they're big players in all of this shit. You know? There's a guy named Nicholas Rockefeller. He was he was like the playboy of the family, okay? And uh, he had a friend named John Russo. Uh, he John Russo was a film producer. He made uh, 
movie. I don't know if you heard of it, Bronx Tale. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Anyways, he was the producer of that movie. And uh, he was friends with Nicholas Rockefeller, and they'd go out and party and shit. And uh, they they would talk a lot. And one of the times they were talking, he uh, Nicholas Rockefeller said to John, he said, you know, you want to know my family's greatest uh, accomplishment? He was like, no, what is the Rockefeller's greatest accomplishment? You know, he's like, uh, it's women's suffrage. He was Ooh. like, women's suffrage? He was like, what do you mean? The right for women to vote and shit? He was like, yeah. He's like, why would that be y'all's best, greatest accomplishment? He said, well, <clears throat> it accomplished two things. The first thing at the time, only half the population was paying taxes with women's yep. suffrage. Taxes. He said, but number two, and more importantly, at that time, over 90% of people were home taught, at least until secondary education. He said, with women's suffrage, we were able to introduce the uh, public schools. He says, now to this day, he said, 85% of the kids go to public schools where we introduce the belief system. We tell them our version of history. We tell them what, what is uh, fact and fiction. <clears throat> and he said, that's our greatest accomplishment. We, we, so basically what he's saying is they have control over everything that you believe to be true. Everything that you've learned in school, everything that your parents learned in school was shaped and molded by these fuckers ever since the days of women's suffrage, which were what? Back in the 1920s? 1900? Yeah. 19 teens? So yeah, they've been fucking with us for over 20, uh, over 100 years now of indoctrination. It's thick. All, I, I, I'm, I'm under the belief I'm under the belief that uh, <clears throat> that sorry about that. <clears throat> No that problem. All of that all of our history is a lie. You know what I mean? I, I'm not even sure how much of slavery is the truth. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm not even sure how, how much of that went on. You know? Because, look, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you another thing. When I was at a, because I went to, I was there on January 6th, and I was in the middle of that false flag. You know what I mean? But uh, when me and my friend Cecily, we were sitting on the stairs of the Capitol smoking a blunt right on the little foyer. <laughs> Not inside, if anybody's listening to this. I was never inside. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. They still <laughs> looking for people, right? I, I, don't fit, I don't fit their narrative anyway, so. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, fucking, uh, I, was, I thought to myself, I was like, this building was not built like 200 years ago. No, sir, please tell me there, that. There, 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 there's no way in hell that this building was built after 1776. There's no. absolutely no way in hell because what we're told is D.C. didn't exist before 1776. They built D.C. from the ground up, remember? They built the White House, they built the Capitol, they built the monument, and this was all supposed to happen after the Revolutionary War. After they were dead broke and poor and spent uh, all their money on the war, and right? I'm at this building and I'm saying there's no fucking way. Not, not only the fact that all these stone, granite bricks and shit, I don't even see how we, we don't even build shit like that today with all the technology we have. We don't build anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like that. You know? And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this shit is so worn and tethered. Like the stairs, the, the, when you're walking up the stairs, they're so worn. It's not two years, 200 years of wearing. That's fucking, it looked like thousands of years of wearing and tearing on those stairs. Like people have been walking up and down those stairs for thousands of years. That's what it looked like to me. You know what I'm saying? So it begs the question is, what is D.C.? So as I'm walking around D.C. and I'm looking, the Capitol and the, the White House and the Monument, these aren't the only buildings like this. D.C.'s littered with Roman-looking buildings. And mind you, on the front grand door of the Capitol, on one side, you have a Roman soldier. And on the other side, you have the statues, a statue of what looks like the Greek goddess of Athena or something. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, what in the world? to do with the Revolutionary War. And this when this was supposed to be built around those times, shouldn't you have like George Washington on one side and Thomas Jefferson on the other or some shit? Why the fuck would you put a Roman soldier and a statue of Athena on the doors of the Capitol? Why would you do that? Why would you have Roman architecture throughout it? Why? That, what does that have to do with anything revolutionary? And where did they get the gold to put on the top of all these Capitol buildings and all that back Absolutely. then? Yeah. This is, these are all lies right in front of our face. 
see our history that we're all true. So here people are saying, this is our house. This is our house. This is the people's house. People of America. Is it? Is it the people of America's house? I don't know. Because this shit looks a lot older than fucking America. You know what I'm saying? This right. shit looks a thousand years old. You know what I'm saying? This looks like somebody else's shit. Somebody else's house. You know what I mean? That's what it looked like to me. And not only that building, but many other buildings across D.C. Is this some... And then, and then and then, me and my friend was talking. They're like, well, what happened? Where was... Why... And we, the, we, I, we suspect that there was some sort of mud flood. And D.C. wasn't built, but excavated. You know? Excavated from the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Yeah, they're, 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 we have been lied to on a grand scale. Our whole history is a lie. I'm not sure how it or any of it if it's true. You know what I'm saying? Because here they are telling us about some revolutionary war and the first president being George Washington, when we all know there was presidents before George Washington, which is weird. Wait a minute, there's presidents before George Washington? What are you talking about? One of them was black. Like, what is even going on here? You know what I'm saying? This is all true. There was presidents before this. Their whole history is bullshit. They've lied to us about everything. So people get it all riled up about this, about that. You know what I'm saying? Republican, Democrat, this America, all this stuff. Man, they've been lied to us about all this shit. You know what I'm saying? What we need to do is start trying to get what is true or some shreds of truth and start building something else. People need to come together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Who you think you are as a as a race, as your culture, I'm sure lies as well. You know what I mean? They like people get so like the funniest thing I thought was when people take these 23 and me tests, you know what I'm saying, and get completely shocked about their whole fucking heritage. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, here I am thinking I'm Italian this whole time and I got no Italian in my blood. You know what I'm saying? It's right. Crazy. Or you the meaning of a Cherokee Indian, because that's exactly. really just a label they made for biracial people. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, and I don't advise that. Don't take one of those tests. <laughs> they are storing your DNA. Yeah, they're collecting <laughs> your DNA. Not that, not that they don't get it in other ways, but we're talking about corporations. See, people understand they're like, oh, well, they can get my things anyways. They can get my things from anyways. You know what well, I'm saying? But you didn't consent. Yeah. Well, you don't you you don't consider the fact that out in space right now, there's no governments ruling that shit. It's all a board of corporations. Okay. Yeah. It is they call it the triumphant, okay. And these board of corporations, they pretty much rule space these day and ages, okay. It's not the Nazis, it's not surely not us. The corporations rule everything out there, and they're bored, okay. And they're <laughs> and their corporations, they 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 pretty much allow anything. It's anything goes, as long as the bottom line is good. You know what I mean? They they don't have morality in any of their laws. So here on Earth. When you say, oh, I'm just, they can get my DNA if they wanted to, so I'm going to get this 23andMe test. You don't know what corporation out in space is behind these 23andMe tests. You know right. what I mean? So sure, yes, at a hospital, they might have your DNA on file, but this corporation might not have access to this hospital. But they surely have access to the 23andMe test that you just sent them. You know what I mean? So here they are taking your DNA that you gladly and willingly gave them, never read the small print of any of it, you know what I mean? And, and gladly give it away to this corporation who then takes it and does God knows what with your sample. Because a DNA sample from a human is very valuable out there. We are genetic royalty to these people, to most of the civilizations out there because of our making, because of whoever made us. Our 22 genetic hodgepodge of races that's inside of us is very valuable for many reasons. <clears throat> like us human beings, there's three main reasons why they love us human beings. Number one <clears throat> is we're very resilient, okay? Like, either, <clears throat> like, I have two theories about this what went on, this so-called, you know, that went on in 2020. I don't want to get too in deep. But uh, <clears throat> one is that... The signs that we went back in time. One is, my one, one theory <laughs> I have is that, you know how back in the day when they tried to nukes, ETs would come and stop them from being able to shoot them off. You know what I mean? That's a, a story that's been told many times over on many different occasions, okay? 
So what if this virus or whatever they had was really a kill switch to all of us or something that was going to be really, really bad, but these ETs rendered it inert. So it really wasn't that bad. It was just a flu. You know what I'm saying? That's one because they're not letting a mass destruction happen. So they will let them use a mass destruction virus to wipe us all out. So they rendered it inert just like they did with the nukes. That's why it wasn't that bad. Or because these guys wouldn't waste all this time making something that's not going to do what they wanted it to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> or, or we humans are just that goddamn resilient that they didn't put it, put enough into it. They thought they did, but they didn't because we just adapted to it so damn quickly because of all the shit they've been poisoning us with. You know what I mean? We've been poisoned to the hilt, but we still keep ticking. You know what I mean? Us humans, we it takes it, we man, we ingest a lot of toxins on a daily basis from all over the place. You know what I mean? The shit we eat, the shit we drink, the shit we breathe, the shit we touch, we're absorbing toxins left and right. You know what I mean? We are a resilient bunch. So, so yeah, go ahead. No, so what I was just going to add to that is it all boils down to our ability to work with the frequencies because nothing is solid, right? So yes. when they enter, when they when they are putting in the toxins, we because of our genetics, we have the ability to modify our frequency to make that inert. And so yes. this is why they can't. This is what they want is what they're trying to get from us and yet we are because of our resilience we can be that one step ahead of them and so they're trying to control us and yet as long as we can change our frequency then they can't control that aspect of us they can they can control the psyche but there's that god particle within us that's able to move beyond their what they're trying to their agenda you're, you're absolutely right because we are we are sleeping giants is what we really are we're, yeah. we're, we're we're superman with a dampening switch with a governor switch on us okay we, we can go uh, thousands of miles an hour but we're, we're stuck on 60 you know <laughs> because this is the way they the, the what it has to do with our strands of our dna and things like that but whatever happens they they have restricted us to the point that we are but we do have certain innate involuntary things that still act like superman when it comes to us you know what i'm saying i.e are able to be resilient and like and like you just said terry able to modify using our <laughs> our, our our frequencies to to modify things and change and, and and render things inert and, and, and transmute things, you know what I mean? Because we have the power inside of us to do a great many things, a great many things. So when survival mode kicks in, it's like involuntary actions, but we just can't kick it in voluntarily. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's hard It's it's hard to sneakily take us out too, you know what I mean? That's why they try to, that's why the, the whole the whole ruse about all of this. This is, this is what it's all about. They have to, we have to choose our servitude. We have to choose our slavery. You know what I mean? We 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 have to choose all of this. Hold on one second. No problem. And I, I guess that's why um, people keep getting suckered into race wars. And that's why I said, you said, you know, this thing that happened to us. I've watched people go back in time. I feel like we already had like, um, you know, Eddie Murphy already discussed this. We already did this with uh, Richard Pryor. We've already done race relations. We used to have what? Electric Boogaloo Beach. Remember when all the movies we used to watch, everybody was like black, white, Chinese, Puerto Rican. It's like, it's like a hamster wheel with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought I thought we already moved past this. I thought we were, we were even all with women's rights. Like women are like, we gotta show our armpit here. Like bitch, we did this in the seventies. Like we already did this. Why are we going backwards? Yeah. As if we gotta go shout it out loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Like we're doing all the same things it's, it's, that we it's, just it's, got it's, through it's, doing. We were we were good. You know what I mean? Look 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 look. It's 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 because it's being propagated to us. I mean, we have, we have, look, in the, especially in the black community, they, they have 
stuck with this old standby called the boule for the longest time. Oh, you know Jesus. I mean? And 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 they they are they are literally the gatekeepers of knowledge for the black community. You know what I mean? They they're the ones So basically, let's say this when you're the when you're the prisoner in jail, they make you what is that word? The is it's not the warden, you're not the warden. You're this other word, like you're you're the guy, like you're a prisoner, but you're still in charge. Oh, you're, you're like uh, you're like the guy from life that was. Like, yeah, you're that guy from life. Like you would forget the guy from life was actually uh, in jail, in jail yeah, because jail. he's like, y'all need to get in line. You know? Exactly. God, I forget yeah, what that, that word is, but anyway, yeah. Yes, that is the boule right there to a nutshell. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So knowing that all these orders are going against the benefit of humanity, they don't care because at the end of the day, all the orders are going against the benefit of humanity. You know what I'm saying? It's just worse for black folks, you know? And and they're the ones who, every time it seems like there's a leg up, somebody's been in infiltrated it's a leg down you know what i'm saying i i think back to uh, uh what was it the black wall street what was that in oklahoma yeah you know but i mean saying? that's like assuming that that was the only black place where there was i, I, I understand that, but that yeah might, they they pumped the story the we know about you know what I'm yeah saying? Because, because i tell you with all false flags trustee you know what I mean? Like, that was a false flag. They blamed it on something else. You know what I'm saying? They literally bombed the town and blamed it on something else. You know what I mean? But the reason why we all know that story is because they have to brown beat the cover story into your head. So anything that you, no matter what story it is, could be obscure. Like, why do we still remember Jean Benet Ramsey? You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know who Jean Benet Ramsey is, right, Erica? Terry. Heck yeah, I was obsessed with that yeah. for quite some time. Now, even this many kids are killed every day. It's even white little white girls with blonde hair. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's why, true. Why, why was it so fixated on that case? Because it was a cover story, a huge cover story, because really it was a ritual sacrifice that almost got exposed. Okay? Involving, of all people, uh, 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 the president of Gaia. No, no, who, not who, who, what, what? The president of Gaia TV, Ra, what's his name? Ra Savar, Savjari, Rasir Zamjari, or something like that. Anyways, yes, the president of Gaia TV, and uh, actually, what's his face? Uh, 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 what's the other guy from Gaia? Fuck, the guy that Corey Good suing. I forget his name. Shit, but anyways, drama, he, drama. He, he wrote a he wrote a cover piece all the way back in the nineties for this guy. It was in Colorado, okay, Boulder, Colorado, to be exact. And apparently, the rich. So the story goes that uh, <clears throat> they have they they had a uh, the way these elite sometimes do their sacrifices. They have to sacrifice a kid. You know what I'm saying? But they get in the pool with other elite. You know what I'm saying? So apparently there are 10 families here trying, being inducted into this secret society. And one of their kids had to be the sacrifice. Okay? And the way they picked the kid is, it was Christmas time and they all decorated the Christmas tree, right? And the kid, all amongst the kids by themselves with no adult help. And the kid that was tasked to put the star on top of the tree was the one they were going to sacrifice. So imagine how that shit went all these parents sitting around like oh my god please don't touch that star please don't touch that star kid you know what i'm saying and wh whoever kid picks up the star and puts it on top of the tree is the kid that they sacrifice and all the families are in apparently uh, is how that went down in this this instance and john benet was the one that was picked and they messed up on the cover of the body and it was all big clusterfuck and apparently they had people that were trying to tell you know what I'm saying? So people are trying to come clean about this whole goddamn thing, and they neutralize them and put the cover story in place and brown beat it like after your head so you would never know anything about it. That's why you know John Benet Ramsey's head name so fucking much, because they 
plastered on the news, the cover story, so fucking much. And that and that goes along with all kinds of other stories that you hear that are there that are from color. I'll vouch for that too because they showed the the photo of Ghislaine from the back watching her at her uh like one of her competitions. Oh, I believe it. I, I, I never heard the FC's name, but they were involved in all this type of shit. So it's well, then that would be. I would also throw in there Casey Anthony. Mm. Absolutely, we remember that name. How many how many same situations that happened? But we remember that name so fucking much. Proud beat into her head. The cover story. You know what I'm saying? All these things, man. It's crazy. I tell you. You know, there I mean? was the one lady who was some type of okay. She was schizophrenic. She had five kids. Her husband. They were trying to live small or whatever, and they, she had them living on a bus. And finally, she had a breakdown, and so they moved into a house. But the thing was, number one, I'm gonna say that they never point out what religion the person is practicing when any of this stuff happens. They'll say the person's black or white, but they'll never say what what church you go to. <laughs> <laughs> like, wh- 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 you know, what religion are you? But um, so they were really deep into this church. They moved into a house. Supposedly she drowned five kids by herself. And I was telling my sister, I imagine the five of us, our brothers and sisters all in one house and somebody come try to drown you. You don't think the rest of us would have, you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. kicked our mom's ass like, hell no. <laughs> like ah! you know, how do you drown five kids? And I said, mm. now, because now once I found out about ritual abuse and so on, I had to look because I was addicted to court TV. That made me have to look back at every court case I ever watched and was like, man, this is all a lie. It's all a scam. These cases are all, you know, maybe some of these people are killing people for insurance money, but especially anything that had anything to do with kids. I looked at it all differently after that. Yeah. 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 Especially you know, what I uh, found out about CPS and uh, Falcon, right, they they're all complicit in all of this child trafficking. You know what I mean? So it, 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 it's it's horrific. You know what I mean? The amount of kids that go missing in foster care is astonishing. How, like how how do you lose a kid? It's Pinocchio. How does it and 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 and, and it's just happens there's now they even have they just say oh the kid got lost in the system. No, but you 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 remember oh, Pinocchio? Brush it off like it ain't no thing. Oh, the kid's just lost in the system. I'm sorry, you were a crackhead. Now you're clean and you want your kid back. Sorry, kid. But do you, do you know Pinocchio? Yes. Do you remember the situation? Yes. And so the two guys who want to steal the kids say, we're going to take them to what treasure Island or whatever the name of the Island is. And he said, but what if we get caught? He said, it won't matter because the, if the kids are bad, nobody's going to believe them anyway. So you got a justification for why the kid is gone. Oh, he runs away all the time. He's a liar. He lies all the time. And I had a friend whose kid got kind of caught up and I said, you did the most dangerous thing there is because you're untrustworthy anyway. And you like to tell little lies. No one will ever believe you so that when you did, you know, get, you know, taken by the social services, you just don't know where they're going to put you, that you could have disappeared and no one would have been able to vouch for you. Like, no, he's a good kid. Oh, you know, he would never run away because of the things that you do. They would easily just explain you away. You know, I literally had to talk with a kid like that. And I think we do need to talk to kids more and be honest. I used to tell my son, you think it's bad here, (laughs) which I'm a good mom, but my son was a complainer. (laughs) I said, go out there <laughs> and see what you get. <laughs> but yeah, the, the the whole CPS system. I mean, here one day, I think they, they caught 109 people who were into trafficking and uh, what do you call it? Child porn. And they were all employees at places where children go play. Disney. Well, Disney, not just Disney, um, they got a place called the Fun Spot. They got, you know, Chuck E. Cheese. Like, they, there's these places where people work that, you know, a lot of things that go on. The scary thing about it is they're controlled by someone else. And yeah. They, right. Yeah. Who's, who's, who's buying their stuff? 
Well, in in and then to the these these places here because I live in Florida where I might hear something locally on the news you'll never hear you'll never hear about the monorail that crashed while the guy was supposed to be running the monorail and he was at dinner and he allowed two trains to crash and someone died on the little monorail the little Disney monorail and you won't hear about like the little girl that got you know molested in the wave pool or this lady who they shoved they said oh you want to go through the express lane and when she was in the express lane she got raped in the express lane because you know you're going through those rides you're going through little tunnels you know and um, yeah these just things that you won't hear about and I'll, i'm gonna tell you something because we did i think we discussed weather earlier that in florida on the news they told us during the hurricane in 20 maybe 17 they said here, you know, the storm was coming, but in New York and other places, they were saying that they evacuated. So my family will call me and say, hey, they said it's time to evacuate. I said, that's not true. They didn't They didn't say that to us. And I guess maybe that was plausibility, plausible deniability for the rest of the world. So they could say, well, if something happened to us, we told them to evacuate, but they did not evacuate us. They didn't. But in the news everywhere, it said that we were supposed to be evacuating. So, yeah. So a lot of, you know, when you got one company owning every TV station in the world. Yeah. And, and you got to also remember something about Disney as well. Who knows what technology they have access to? I mean, <sighs> I mean, we, we, we've heard many claims from many whistleblowers about being able to stop time or put you back in time like you never left and mind wipe you and stuff. What if they're doing this to kids on a scale? You know what I'm saying? Kids that go into Disneyland or maybe ride one of these rides. I did not they, feel good. Could, could, could they stop you, put you in a, some sort of time bubble or whatever, or you go through some sort of portal or one of these rides and horrific things happen to you they mind wipe you and you go right back like you were still on the ride you know what i mean and and you're like well i think they do that in elementary school you know well number one it's just who has access to this stuff because they can't just give it to anybody everybody doesn't just have access to this stuff you know because otherwise it would get out to the public somebody would so it's 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 very very secretive but a place like disney would most definitely be a hub for one of these things i mean we know already that they have connections with epstein island you know they had a cruise line that actually visited the island you know <laughs> so they do this to a whole goddamn cruise ship full of fucking kids and just have their way for hours and then put these kids back on the cruise ship like nothing ever happened i mean who knows? You know what I'm saying? Why would a fucking whole cruise ship go to visit Epstein Island? Like, why would that happen? You know what I'm saying? The, I, if you ever look on a map of this place, it's very sparse. There's nothing really on the up, upper lands. There's surely nothing to host a whole bunch of kids. I'm sure whatever they have is underground, but they're not going to have any kids touring anything underground on an obscure island. Like, why would that be a stop? Like, they have it on boat logs that they these boats have stopped there for multiple hours on Epstein Island. Why? Are they do they have some sort of technology down there? You know what I'm saying? Where they can just in take these kids and put them back on the boat, you know what I'm saying? And mind wipe them like it never happened. And they're left with the trauma of course. You know what I mean we have we have we have a bunch of kids nowadays that seem fucking emotionally scarred for no reason. You know what I mean? Like they they had a fine upbringing, no out uh, overt drama towards them, but they act like they're trauma patients. Why? Yeah. Is it? You know what I'm saying? Who knows how widespread all this stuff is? I mean, most of these claims that we have concrete evidence for are all the way back in the 50s, 60s, because that through Freedom of Information Acts. But after that, they started using corporations, and they ain't got to write shit down. They ain't got to tell you shit. You know what I'm saying? So nowadays, what have they done? You know how fast these guys expound on their technology. In fact, that goes back to one of the things I was saying why we're so coveted. Because we are very, as human beings, are very ingenuitive. We, even the dumbest among us, you give us a sample. <laughs> the dumbest among us. <laughs> <laughs> 
But even the dumbest among us, they fucking uh, you give them a sandwich, they're doctoring up, putting some chips on it. You know what I mean? And he kind of they're they're making it better. Inventor. Than a- exactly. They're spicing it up. You know, we do that with technology. Apparently, most ETs out there aren't ingenuitive like that. They're very stagnant in the way they do things and the way they operate. They do they find something that works, and if it don't break, break don't fix it, and they just keep going straight. You know what I'm saying? Us, we're always trying. They to rig it. it. We don't. They don't rig it like we. Do. I heard Germans are like that. Spinning everything. We we re reinvent fucking everything. We're sitting there rebooting classic movies. We'll be re we try to expound on fucking everything. That's our nature. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. Because you said that, they said that Germans are like that. Like so, you know how we might get a crib and we we'll be like, oh, instructions, and we. Thought- <laughs> <laughs> like that, ger- like for German people, they go by the book and they go through and they by order. And then at the end, like American people will just like have three screws left and be like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And that is, that is, they say that's one of the big differences between the uh, German civilizations. Like the German civilizations, they say they use the same shit over and over again. Like they don't waste anything. We, they use the same shit. Like they like you go into like if they had a classroom on series colony, let's say, for example, it looks like a 1950s classroom because they just keep using the same things. They don't upgrade anything. But as opposed to us, we're upgraded all the goddamn time. Every fucking thing. Well, well James also said that the German colonies are boring because they don't know how to shake their booty and they don't know how to. <laughs> They don't they're, have fun. They're, they're, they're very analytical and they're very straightforward. They're very regimented. You know what I'm saying? Us, even out, out in space, we're, we're the same way. We, we fucking, we, we say, oh, we just this fucking spacecraft, but we just got this new version over here. So we're going to go with this. You know what I'm saying? We're upgrading everything. You know what I'm saying? Some of these Germans are still flying around the Hannah for for 100 years old. You know what I'm saying? But uh, not, not, not in a, a corporation. They're, they're, they're all about luxury. Wow. They're all about astounding. And that's why and that's why apparently we're very coveted as well. Apparently on Mars, these corporations have set up a a, a a pretty much a gigantic Costco. ETs from all around come around technology to us. We re, re reboot it, make it better, and they pay us money for it. Meanwhile, we keep the technology and, and use it for other things ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Apparently we make things better. So people not only are we coveted for our our, our healing factors and our 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 our, <coughs> our, our ability to uh, to uh, to uh, adapt to anything, our terrain, you know what I'm saying, our, our weather, sixes. Most ETs aren't like that, apparently. You know what I'm saying. If, if anything's remotely out of their comfort zone, they can't survive. We survive through a lot of shit. Shit, look at this planet. We have people surviving in zero temperatures to over a hundred temperatures. Uh, all this one planet every day. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> we uh, it's 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 that and the ingenuity and the final one is is, is just our personality. Apparently, people don't have a personality like human they beings. They don't tell jokes. You, exactly. We're we're funny. Our arts, we're so creative. You know what I'm saying? Our 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 our, our entertainment, our music, everything. You know what I'm saying? People come, they say a- aliens come from miles around just to watch us, like reality TV shows. You know what I'm saying? They they pay money to go down to Disney World and the ones that kind of look like us, they can walk among us. And they pay money to do that as well. It's like a big we're like a big torso. They they say they they make pieces of art from Earth hanging around on walls throughout this fucking galaxy and universe. You know what I'm saying? Because we're that creative, apparently. And they like come the, here for spring break to have a fling. Like the art behind your head right now, Erica. They can't do that. They can't do that. Because it's abstract, right? It's it's they not. Can't, they can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So they marvel that we can. Why they can't do that, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just finished... Uh, the book, uh, Journey to Project Serpo. <laughs> and mm. uh, I've been meaning to what uh, I actually listened to it. I've been meaning to get through that for a long time, though. But uh, Me? It's, crazy. it's crazy because these Ebens, they're, they're, they're like that, like the Germans, but way, way worse. You know, and they, they don't have anything. There's nothing in, in the forms. Of, they have two games that they play, you know what I'm saying? And they have one dance that they do. And they have times where they can do this game and they have times where they can do this dance. 
And that's their form of entertainment. And that's it. And that's all. You know what I'm saying? And they apparently have a form of TV, but that just gives them instructions on what job they're doing and basic news of the day. Which is crazy. And this is on a whole different fucking planet. And, the, and, and, and they're operating similar to us. You know what I mean? Meaning that there's some sort of template out there on how to operate that people have been falling into for quite a long time. And since we don't, don't do it quite like everybody else does, we're very interesting. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that we ever have. I think the arts on this planet are, have always been crazy and ridiculous sculptures and stuff like that. You know what I mean? We've always been... There's, that's one of the reasons why we're coveted. So for those three main reasons, we're coveted throughout the galaxy. You know what I mean? So back to that 23andMe test, a little uh, sample of your genetics is all valuable on the open market. So if you're giving your shit to 23andMe, one of these corporations up there can take your shit and sell it, which they do. See, you, um, yeah. see, the, the, the interesting thing is, is when they take genetics... They're taking just that physical genetics, but mm. we're we're more than that oh, yeah. because our That's our DNA essence. our DNA is is around us, and those strands of DNA don't necessarily translate to what's in your blood. It translates oh, into right. your collective memories of your ancestors, right? So how is it that I can, um, well, I, I can't, but how is it? That that I can pick up a musical instrument and just play it. It's not going to show up in, in a genetics test, right? Sure, but if there's sure. a collective memory that I can tap into and I can tap into, you know, my Akashic records and go into past lifetimes that I may have been Egyptian, I may have been Chinese, I may have been Incan, but it doesn't show up in my bloodline genetics, but it's in my DNA template. You're absolutely right, Terry. You're absolutely right. And, and they they've learned this about that's why that's why they can't just clone you that's why no. when they clone you they have to take a piece of your soul so they soul split you otherwise they just have a, a, a empty vessel you know what i'm saying now they can grow you and then they can clone you like that but there's no there's no guarantee or anywhere close to any assurance that you're going to be anywhere to the person that they want in the first place what I'm saying, so they don't go through the trouble of just cloning another person because that person could be a, like you said, a completely different person. You know what I mean? And he, and and and, and it, the soul in that is is random. I'm not exactly sure how all that works. You know what I'm saying? But I know for them to make a version of you, they have to ha incorporate the soul as well. You know what I mean? And they have a way of splitting the soul, but they do not have a way of see. That's their whole rub. If they had a way of con truly controlling souls and what they did and where they go, they wouldn't need to do any of the things that they do to us. You know what that's, I'm saying? Exactly now, they have the ability to track souls. You know what I'm saying? They have the ability to split souls. But they don't have the ability to manipulate souls and, and, and put souls where they want them to go and things like of that nature. You know what I mean? Oh, they, they can do soul can, transfers, I, but... <laughs> My, my oh. understanding is they can probably get down to that astral level and trap the soul from that astral level. So there's yeah. a separation between that astral level and the rest, right? Yes. So they can manipulate at that point. But that higher soul, they haven't got the um, the ability to, to trap that part yet. Yes, yes. Yes, your over soul, your higher your self. Your soul, right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and... and, and... It, it, we're all just fractals anyways of some That's other right. part anyways you know what i'm saying that's why our souls can be split in the first place because we already are a split soul from our original higher self that's whatever the whatever that is and whatever that entails i'm sure if we understood it we wouldn't be here you know <laughs> it is, i don't know what i don't know what the purpose of this place is 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 it is it prison or or is it school i don't know you know what i mean but uh we're here and I think I think especially three of us sitting right here are here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think it's by happenstance, you know, but who knows? Maybe it is. 
When you said about the split souls and being part of things, it reminds me of Eternals. <laughs> because what we were all split back out, we had a mission, and then you're supposed to like go back together to create some new new thing. I think that's the biggest fear of dying is to leave this thing that you know to become a part of the, the whole again, the part of the, the greater consciousness. But um, I did want to say a couple of little things to catch up. When you talked about corporations, something that people don't know is that during the Clinton administration, I believe it was, it was either during Obama time or Clinton time, but the uh, corporations were allowed to adopt children. Yeah. So just think about that. Like, so if this corporation decides to go to Haiti or wherever and they want to go help and save kids and you're wondering like, why can kids just disappear that corporations can adopt kids? And then I wanted to go back to when we went to Disney during the conference I was told by James that the Fountain of Youth was down there and that in finding the place to put that, that that was a place where it was believed to have the Fountain of Youth. And um, when we were there, as soon as we went to Magic Mountain, you could feel the pressure. It felt like we were going into a, a very dense place. Um some of us were getting headaches. Some of us were coughing. Other people were normal, but I think because we're energy sensitive, we were feeling, we were going through it, literally. And it felt like if my bones were metal and the ground was a magnet, like our bodies felt like they were being pulled to the ground. And I was like, how can they legally do this? And so when you're talking about that atmosphere, yeah, there's like chemicals being pumped in to make it smell a certain way. There's no insects to be found. Um, and then there was this feeling of extreme gravity. And then there was like the pulsating of the third eye. And, and you know, it's supposed to be the happiest place on earth, but it was actually like the most miserable people I've ever seen in my life. Even the families that were there, I didn't see any families like, yay, oh my God, like, come on, Susie. Like, none of that was going <laughs> on. Was like, get your ass here, you, you know, come on. Like, it, it was just, the, the employees were just looking with like a grimace on the face and it was just like, wow. But then you talked about mind wiping and I honestly have a theory because I know I was one of those kids that tested to be in a, to go to a different school, to be in the ACE program is where they, what they called it, where I live. And I don't remember if I was in this thing for three years, I don't ever remember stepping on a bus to get there. Don't know how I ever got to the school to get on the bus. But how about this? All the times that they showed us films at school. Do you ever remember? So the light goes on or off and the thing goes five, four, three, two, one. Do you remember anything like and then you're like, you come back and you're like getting in trouble for sleeping. But why were you getting in trouble for sleeping? Were you literally put to sleep during that time? That's interesting. I tell you what, I, I, I was, uh, I, I, uh, I too was in one of those programs uh, where, where, where I'm from. It was called uh, the GT program, Gifted uh, and Talented. Yeah, it's Gifted and Talented. Yeah, sales, I remember, ace. I remember Tony Rodriguez, where he was from, it was called TAG, Talented and Gifted. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's all the same thing, right? And they separate you, usually based on IQ score. You know what I'm saying? I have a very high IQ score. So I was always in all these programs, all growing up. And it was just like a given that I was always assigned into these programs, I guess, because they always had my IQ on record. But uh, I remember later on in life, I had missing time that I never thought about until <clears throat> just after my father died, unfortunately, because I wanted to ask him a lot of questions about it. But uh, I used to go to Georgetown University for this program when I was in high school. And I went for uh, two summers. And then during between the summers, I went on the on Saturday throughout the school year. OK. What? During, <clears throat> yeah. During these two summers and the Saturdays that I would go every every Saturday during the morning, I thought back and I don't have any memory of any of these classes. No. Nope. I, I can remember my first grade teacher. I can remember kids are in my class in my first grade. I can remember 
activities that we did in sixth grade, you know what I'm saying? I have a pretty good memory, especially long-term memory, you know what I'm saying? And I think back, and I can't remember one kid from my class except for one, this guy named Rodney, and that was my father's name, and I'm thinking that's the only reason I remembered his name. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and that's never like me. I can remember... I, I can remember classes that I've oh, I only participated in like two or three times, and I can remember people's names. I, in college, I can remember classes that I were in, and I can remember teachers' names. And But I was here for two summers and every Saturday for a whole school year, and I don't remember zip. I, all the thing I remember about the campus was the cafeteria and, and then another food place. And I, maybe I'm thinking because I, I'm a fat kid at heart and I love food that I remember that. <laughs> 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 but other than that, I don't remember shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then I start researching Georgetown University. And do you know that Georgetown University is dubbed the Illuminati capital of the country? What? I said, Whoa. what the fuck? <laughs> I had no idea. I said, the Illuminati capital of the country, Georgetown University? Fuck, and I spent all that time there and I have no idea of any memories of it. Very weird. So... So my question to you now is, where are you now? Like, what would have happened to be that prime target there to where you are now? Did you not comply with their program that they had to then just get you out of there? Were you not the the robot that they wanted? Just I I, I, I don't know whether I'm I'm no, no, I, I, I hear right, you. I don't I, I don't get what I'm saying. Yes, I hear you. And I've tried to think about that as well. And piecing together other people's stories, you know what I'm saying? Like Corey Good said that he was, before he was ever taken into the program, he went through training and through one of these special classes and they would pick him up in vans and take him to certain places and he wouldn't remember what they were doing there, but he remembered being taken there. Okay. <clears throat> uh Maybe this was some sort of training for something that happened, and I participated in that, and they put me back like and wiped my memories like the rest of these super soldiers or whatever. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I, I do know that it felt like most of my life I was being groomed, and I bucked my grooming. You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to go to a certain school, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't go to that school, and ever, ever since along the way, I've up to anything that I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I, right now, I still do it to this day. You know, I don't have a traditional job. I can't, I could, I, I don't, I have an a, affliction to a nine to five. I, I just can't do it. You know what I'm I saying? Don't... My soul hurt thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Thinking about sitting in traffic, going to work every day. It, 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 it's so <sighs> something to me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I know I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I think that's for a reason. You know what I mean? I, I think I, I look, I tell you, I, I my whole life growing up, everybody always said I was going to be some sort of politician. You know, I think that's what I was supposed to be. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm glad I never went that route. I was I was supposed to go to law school. I already had offers to law schools, even though I wasn't even going to college yet. You know what I'm saying? I was in this D.C. law program and I was supposed to be all good at that shit. Apparently, they kept telling me at least, you know what I'm saying? So I. I I know my path was already laid out in front of me and I did not want that shit. You know what I'm saying? I know I was supposed to go to college, go to law school, become a lawyer, then probably eventually become a politician. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't do it. So I have this theory kind of like how it's, it, this is why Kanye West is so confusing, right? Because there's Kanye, the program, Kanye. And then there's the free will Kanye that does not necessarily agree with the program. And it's like, he, he, he'll be in the program and then he'll come out and say something that gets everybody's attention that makes total sense and he's telling the truth and I call it a smoke bomb. He drops a smoke bomb, it's like, fuck you, smoke bomb, ah, you know? And he gets out of line and then they line him back up like, okay, so he's in there and he wants to come out and he would like to live his regular life, but he can't. I'm not really sure that it's a matter of that we don't, we're not the joy that they're looking for because they found us. And when you understand that they can do 20 years and back and they can erase and they can do this and do that, they've already used you, but they've decided they can't, they might not be able to let you walk 
you know, how they have a candidate, but then you don't even know that you're not fully done with your life. So you don't really know, you know, like a um, sleeper agent, you don't know when they're using you. And I'm, I'm going to say this because I got some work done for me and I know when I took the test, when did I take the test around the years of eight and nine years old, when the, when I had this work done, they said, man, you got a lot of blocks and curses on you. And it all started when you were nine. So they successfully found you in the matrix, you know, unplugged you, did whatever they needed to do and put you back. So you've been unplugged. Ever since then, I've had the, 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 that's when night terrors started and you start screaming or you're like, go back to wetting in the bed or for me personally, a girl was about to literally fight me and I'm just, I would completely just be like this in class and I'd be gone and people would be like, you know, I'd get in trouble all the time. Like I'm, I'm completely gone. I don't know how I got out of elementary school. I really, I'm not really sure. <laughs> to the point where people said, oh, you're so dingy. You're so spacey. And I would just be like, fuck you, you know, because you're insulting me the way that they said it until I got to where I'm already in the army. Because for some reason, I kept trying to join at different times until finally I joined. And then I was at the VA hospital and I was getting in trouble at work and I'm waking up and I'm pouring this into the wrong tube. Right. And I'm like, what the I don't need to be here. People are walking up to me saying you said this. And I'm like, no, I didn't. You said that. No, I didn't. You did this. No, I did not. And so finally someone was sitting next to me and they said, what? And I was like, what is your problem? He said, you were in the middle of a sentence. You said, um, you turned your head and you disappeared. And then I said, oh, now I understand what is going on with me. But when you don't know what you don't know, you don't know. Right. Because when you blank out, you don't know. You don't know how many times you blanked out. You don't know where you're going or what you're doing. It's really like the butterfly effect, right? You know how he comes to and the butterfly effect. He's done travel, done change situations and come back in a way. And so I say, well, this might be version number 46 of me. That might be version number 92. You were talking to version number 92. I don't know who you were talking to because I did not have this conversation. And I can remember even my sister would tell me, you said this. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I did not have any of these conversations with you. And I don't know who we are, where we've been at, what we've been doing. But I don't really think it's a matter of they, them not picking the right one and successfully because Something is happening when you're disappearing. Something's happening when you're blanking out and losing time. But maybe I don't make you the president, right? Because that's not your job to be the president. It's not that they didn't pick the right one, but they've already put money blocks on you, right? And they've put, you know. I firmly believe, like, uh, once again, listen to a lot of soldiers. You, they, they your worth to them is not on this planet. You know what I'm saying? It's it's somewhere else. Or if it is on this planet, it's not on the surface population. It's below in these deep under bunkers. You know what I mean? And I, and I always also think about Donnie Marshall. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you ever heard of Donnie Marshall? Never? No, no, no. Oh man, you gotta look this up. You 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 would you would love you would love to hear. It. He's a he's the guy who talks about how he is behind writing most of the hit popular number one songs that ever came out he they have they uh he said they ever since he was a little kid he's had this knack of writing songs and he says all these hit songs that all these artists come out all these pop artists come out that they want to be popular he he's he's the one behind it you know what i'm saying from britney spears to the boy band to you know what i'm saying all those hits of the 90s and 2000s, you know what I'm saying? He claims to be behind a lot of them, okay? And he says that uh, throughout this, they take him to a cleaning facility most nights, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he said he's seen all the, he's seen cloning, he's seen the cloning tubes. He's seen, he said he's seen multiple versions of multiple people, like he's seen Tony Spears clones, you know what I'm saying? He's seen all this. And it's it's funny because Britney Spears actually had a video of her thrusting into a clone lab and breaking files of herself as clones. You know what I'm saying? It was a cartoon. I don't know if you ever saw that video back in the day. 
but it, it, it's it's crazy because she it's a cartoon like an anime cartoon of her breaking into a clone lab and then finding her clones and breaking them the glasses on all of them. You know what I'm saying? And Donnie Marshall claims that this is a real facility. You know what I'm saying? And they have multiple of them. And they and they take you at nighttime and they take you out of your body, which your body remains. They take your consciousness and they zap them into these clones. You know what I mean? And they and they have actual clones be tortured and sexually abused by elite of famous people. So say this elite person wants Jennifer Aniston. You know what I'm saying? Well, they have a clone of Jennifer Aniston. They took her consciousness, zap her into the clone, and it's, it's really Jennifer Aniston. You know what I'm saying? And then you can fucking beat the shit out of her, fuck her, do whatever the fuck you want with her, and they kill the clone, and she zaps back into her body. So... Donnie Marshall is just one of the people who blows a whistle on this, but he's a fascinating guy. He has a lot more to his story, too. I mean, the, the songwriting thing is just one thing about it. I mean, I, I don't know if you ever heard that he said one day he was so mad at what they were doing, he tried to rebel, and he wrote this song called Friday. And the song goes, it's Friday, it's Friday, it's Friday. I don't know if you ever heard that. I heard it. It actually got popular. And he said he wrote it as just being mad and just giving them some bullshit. And he said they actually used it and made it a number one hit. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> he said... <laughs> so that's crazy. But Donnie Marshall, look him up. You definitely I did. Wanna... And I think that's supposed to be the thing with Offset, too. Yeah, well... You, you've seen Offset. Offset got in that green car and had that car accident. His bone was protruding from his head. His teeth were gone. And he was in the studio the next day. I said, what? Did you see it? There's no way that... I was like, so you just took some, some pain meds? But he had, you know, cuts and bruises everywhere. His And, and his bone protruding. I had such a huge lump on his head. And... And so that's kind of the thing with Offset. I guess that he's so good with lyrics or music or whatever that, you know, they got to keep his spirit alive. And so, too, even with Mike Tyson, like Mike Tyson, you know, when he was accused of rape, he basically said he was on a yacht somewhere. Right. And that that, that was not him. And so I think the clones, maybe the like when it comes to the sexual assaults and attacking people, I think it's the clones that are kind of doing this because they're berserk and they're not, you know, they don't know how to behave and they have to always be handled, right? And they get... And they, if you think about it, they don't want to fight to leave the chance, you know? So I wonder how many celebrities are just clones right off the jump right before they become famous or right as they become famous. Well, yeah, because you're not, Oprah ain't going to go to everything. Oprah's not going to everything. Or in their way of controlling them, maybe they always have the original version of them locked up somewhere. You right. Know what That's what always I feel about Oprah. You know what I'm it's always a clone because why else? I mean, just scaring somebody is never enough. You know what I'm saying? Just because they, we're humans. It's in our nature to tell. We got to tell. We got to tell somebody. We can't keep secrets. You know what I'm saying? We got to tell somebody. Even the threat of our family and shit like that, the huge, big enough secret, you're going to tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? That maybe they take you and just keep you locked up. And, and, or keep, not, or, or even worse, even worse, have some sort of soul containment unit or some shit. And your body's already dead. They just have your soul locked up somewhere and they just take pieces of it and put it in clones. You know what I'm saying? And use you like that. Like they're doing with Joe Biden or something like that. You know? I mean... Look at Cher's face. That looks like a rubber mask. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and so the last time I saw her... She went to Madonna, too. So the last time I saw her, she was talking and she was like, hi! And she was talking, but the person, whoever it was, they kept holding on to this. And I was like, this chick is trying to keep her mask on. They got these masks where you could pretend to be a black person. And then what you've already shown us that with what? Medea, Big Mama's House, um, Mrs. Doubtfire. I remember when I was a kid. Do you remember that a kid way back in the day, that Eddie Murphy skit we did on Saturday Night Live where he 
dressed up as a white guy and got on the bus. Do you and, know how many characters he played in, in the mean, Dracula? That was, that, was, that was damn near, that was damn near 35 years ago. You know what I mean? So, but do you remember his black Blackula, his, his black Dracula yeah. thing? Yeah, he remember. played every character just about in that movie. I didn't, it took me a lot that last year I figured out he was the Italian guy sitting in the chair. Yeah, yeah he was. There were so many, and then he did it on um, Coming to America, how they went and played all those different characters. Like, we're getting bamboozled, and we think we know things, but we don't know a thing. These people aren't showing up to all these places. You know, these people aren't showing up to all these events. They're not. Even if they, were, even if they weren't kidnapped, even if they were just in bed. There's more than one Katy Perry. There's more than one Trump. There's more than one of all of these people. And they're all using, oh, they're not acting right. Oh, this one has the red tie on. This one's got the yellow tie. There's got to be. There's got to be. And what I what I always wanted, like, the main thing is, I hate when people say, oh, that was just a movie. I was like, don't you know that movies are all based on fucking truth? Where do you think this shit's coming from? Especially multiple themes that that they have no business of being tied together. Like I wanted, I, I wanted to do a show just showing how things are like secret space program things appear in different movies from different makers, different directors, but the same fucking thing. It's one People aren't that smart to make up these things for movies. Terry has Terry has to leave in a second. Like. All right, so do I soon. So go ahead. Though. Yeah, so we all got to wrap up and we're just going to hang out again, Scott, because I like you just go talking shit about everything. So I like it. Um, But the thing is, people aren't that imaginative. No, like not. you're saying we're creative. But when you think of Lord of the Rings and The Matrix, we're not that fucking spicy. That's art imitates reality. There's been aliens in cartoons since the early 1900s, like before the, the before the even the, 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 the Flintstones, right? They were showing you faces. They were showing you a, aliens. Like this stuff is just. Eric, you that's, that, that's where our creativity does come in because the real version of these stories never happened so dramatically and theatrically. You know what I'm saying? And you that's just added a little like, spice oh, to it. This is a great movie. That's yeah. Great movie. That's and our rebootness and our making things better. We're going to like, oh, they take a story that doesn't happen like that and yeah. make it into a fantastical movie. You know what I'm saying? So Thanks. yes, these stories never happen that fantastically. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. happen in a less fantastical way. But, we, but, but when we watch these movies, it's on a grand version. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've just added the drama. Like, yeah. yeah exactly. The real version of Lord yeah. of the Rings. The real version of Lord of the Rings. Frodo made it in two weeks and dropped the ring and movie over. So like, no, 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 not good enough. We're going to make it dramatical like this. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, 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 I just <laughs> want to leave with this. I read somewhere that Tolkien was commissioned by um, the Rothschilds to write Lord of the Rings. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. And he yeah. was he was he was part of their um, club group. <laughs> so to speak. It's a big club and you ain't in it. Well, I'm glad we got to hang out. Any last words, Scott? No, I just... Uh, Until next time. Again. Definitely need to do this again. Yeah, you know? I know you like it. Ah, letting it out. Yes, you do. Yeah, it's been a little while. It's been a little yeah. while. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, this is the first lady. Check out the links. We're going to drop in there. Um, John Gatto about what is school really about. I'm going to drop a bunch of links in there. Why? When people were green. How about that? How about when Alex Collier talks about when people were green? Um, just, you know, in, in, in these bloodlines and stuff like stop, stop taking the bait, people, and getting into these racial debates about who's better and so and so and so. None of us came from this planet. You know, you know, when I heard about the first Adam. He was what? have part plant. He was also what? One time they tried, he was a hermaphrodite. They've tried a lot of things on this planet. 
stop getting caught up in this racial nonsense because all we're doing is recreating the same social structures that we're trying to break. We're trying to get away from racism. So why are we claiming this elitism and bloodlines when, hell, if, if I'm from that planet, you're from that planet, you, we could all say we royal. But by now, people better learn about the Punit Square and learn recessive and regressive genes. Understand that there's more inside you than blue eyes and, and, and brown hair and these things that, that, that show up because they're um, the dominant gene, it doesn't mean that's all you got. You got a bunch of things bubbling up against your service because, you know, why Why do? Why does rice have so many matching particles in the DNA than we do, okay? So the the rice got a royal bloodline too? Like we're all, you know, we're just, we're creating ridiculousness now. Just cut cut this mess out, this this elitism. And, and if, you're, if you're sitting here not understanding and loving people on an individual basis, you know, then you're full of it, you know, with, with the spies, people spying in groups and they're screenshot and nobody's safe. Everybody's just out here. Well, if you're not with me, you got to be compromised. And, and we're, we're guessing and spreading rumors about who got chips in their heads and all. stop it. Y'all, this is a house of cards. And if I can say that Terry's a fake, then I'm a fake. And if, if, if he's, you know, if, if whatever I say about Scott, these fingers are pointing right back at people. Everything that you do to attack someone else is coming right back to you. If you're hating on people, then people are going to start hating on you. If you're going to, you know, if you, all these accusations, it's just freaking nonsense. And I kind of wanted to have this final say all, do all, be all conversation. I want people to... <laughs> I want to repel. I want to repel uh, negativity and swim out into new space and and find people that are. You know, I've been looking for intelligent life forms for a long time. That's all I want. That's all I've been looking for my whole life. Like, you know how you got that feeling like you just never quite fit in and everything, never, nothing ever quite clicks, and you're like, oh, it's so close. So close. Let's get intelligent. That's why we have our community oh, yeah. one, right? Let's get We're intelligent. Crazy. Command your heart. You, to command your mind to think with your heart. And you know right. some of the shit you're doing ain't right. I gotta go. We're All right, this is me talking to church on a Thursday. To, to meet you. Yeah! And I look forward to you. us getting together. No doubt. We'll we catch you all later. All right, take it easy. Yeah, Thank take you. care. Thank you, Erica.